I've just showed you how to auto acquire points and now I'm going to go through these points and find an area that I would like to collect a tilt series. So because the file is open I can say file read and it makes this dialog box and allows me to read each image in the file. So here's another area and I'm looking at this one. I like that one a lot. Okay. So I want to take a tilt series here at position 8. So I can just load, close this box, find position 8, and say go to XY. And now I have to do something extremely important before I take my tilt series and that is I need to bake out the sample and cook it so that it shrinks laterally in X and Y and also goes through the small about it, amount of thinning in Z that happens during tilt series acquisition. So I'm going to lower the mag and then spread out my beam and open up this box called the dose meter. And this dose will show how much dose has been added to the sample. Okay, we're essentially at 1,500 electrons now, and all I have to do is raise the screen, and it stops the count because the beam is blanked. All right, so let's go to a mag of interest. Usually we image at a 1 nanometer pixel size, which for us is 23,000x. And I'll take a record image just to see what it looks like. And, of course, we're way out of focus, but we're still on our area of interest. I'm going to close this file. And the next thing I want to do is eucentricity. I want to make sure that we're really good and eucentric at this position on the grid. So I'm going to do not rough eucentricity and not fine, but both. And so what this will do is go down to 4700x for rough eucentricity and take a, a series of tilted images from minus 5 to 5 degrees and cross-correlate them to adjust the z height. Okay, rough eucentricity has finished, and we're going to do fine eucentricity. So in this case, we go up in mag to round 10,000x, and we tilt from plus 24 to minus 24. Fine eucentricity has finished, and if we look at the log file, we have this line here called lateral displacement of 1.08 microns. This is a measurement of the distance between the optical axis and the tilt axis, and the closer to zero this is, the better in the sense that you don't have to track as often uh, or do image set uh, shift resets during tilt series acquisition. And I like mine to be pl around plus or minus one micron away from zero. And if you want to correct for this, you go on your tasks menu and say set tilt axis offset. And then it um, calculates what the new offset will be. You say OK. And I usually run fine eucentricity again so that I can double check that everything worked out. Because every once in a while, if you have a funny structure that it's imaging, especially in cryo with big chunks of ice, will actually throw off that calculation. So it's good to just redo it. OK, fine eucentricity has just finished again and you'll see that our lateral displacement is much closer to zero. So I'm happy with the results and now I need to just double check my final imaging parameters. So I go to the setup, check that my record is bin by two, that I'm happy with the exposure time and the drift settling time, take an image and see what it looks like. And here my purpose is to make sure that I have plenty of counts, that I'm in focus, and that it is the area of interest. So I see that we don't have enough counts and we are not in focus, so I'm going to increase the beam intensity. Do a quick autofocus. Take a record image and see what we have. Okay, that's a nice image. I could use my hotkey control I and see that my mean counts are 11,000. And again, on this camera, I'd like to target about 8,500 counts. And so uh, we're a little high, and I actually like it to be a little bit brighter. Take a new record image. Okay, Control-I. 
Now we have almost 13,000 counts, and that's pretty good. Okay, so now let's set up a tilt series. First you go to tilt series and say set up start. And here we get this big dialog box and we'll just go through each portion of the box. So first you need to choose your tilt angles. You can start at either minus or plus and the increment. And then um, you can add a delay time between after it tilts and when it takes the final record image. And in this case I have six seconds because it's um, a heavy holder that's in the microscope. Here you have a chance to double check your magnification and binning, and then it tells you what pixel size that is, which in our, we like to be about a one nanometer pixel. Then you can uh, force a limited image shift to limit in case the aperture gets in the way. And then uh, for beam intensity control in plastic tilt series, we typically try to get the intensity to be at mean counts of 8500. And I like to say keep intensity below current value. So what I've done is I've set up the beam to be a certain size then that gave me almost 13,000 counts and when I tick this box it means the beam will never get smaller which means I know that the beam will not accidentally get so small that it will come into my image area. Then we can pick our defocus target. For plastic we like to be just below focus and we can tell it to focus every so many degrees as well as uh, focus at very high tilts in this case every time above or below 50 degrees and I want to align to my image which is now an A so let's double check that we like that image that's a very good image let's say it wasn't where I wanted to be I could postpone this and I could right click and drag and center my area of interest and then take a new record and that is maybe what I would prefer. So we go back to Tilt Series Setup Start. So now for sure the image is what I want that is in buffer A. I'm not going to refine you centricity because we just did it and here if you're worried about um, your sample being centered after it walks up to high tilt you can leave what's called a mid tilt anchor at a certain degrees usually around 40 to 45 degrees and that will recenter everything and in case something happened. Also at the end of the tilt series if you know you're not going to be in the room it's a good safety check to just close the column valves. When you're tracking you can allow it to uh, take a new record image if you've moved more than three percent away and also if you get some funny lurch in your compu stage that is more than thirty percent of the image size it will stop and ask you if this is correct or not and then you have options to fix for that and you can track either before, after, or both before and after autofocusing. All right, so most of these parameters are all defaults and you really don't have to change them much. So we go ahead and say go. Again, I always save everything in the extended header and this is demo series 1a.st save. And now it's going to start walking up to 60 degrees using a series of track images. And for me, I always like to say end loop. It tells you down here at the bottom that it's ending the loop. And the reason is simply to double check my first image and make sure it's not f very drifting or that I didn't lose my centering, these kinds of things. And so again, we're just walking up. Okay, we're already at 60 degrees. Now it's going to take its final image, then it's going to focus, get us back to focus, and correct for tilt backlash, which is uh, just the general backlash of the compu stage. So it goes up to 63, comes back to 60, does this at low mag. And now it's going to recenter, focus, and take our first record. Okay, another thing that's happened is um, I have a mini tilt series that is collecting in this small box so that you can always movie through this and see all the images and know if anything funny is happening. 
Also, you'll see that we have a focus gradient. So this part of the image is in focus, this is over focused, and this is under focused. And this is perfectly normal in tilt series acquisition and not a problem because at high tilt, only the center third of your image is in your um, tomogram anyway. Also, um, I look to see if the image is nice and crisp and there's no drift and this looks really great. If you wanted to check you could say process FFT on this image and you would see that we have no drift, that we have a nice round circle. Um, as far as I can tell everything looks good so now I can hit the resume button and whenever you resume it'll tell you what's going to happen which would be to tilt and you can override that by selecting any of these options and sometimes if things if you want to recenter a little bit you could do that and then just tell it uh, use image and buffer A to for your next set of alignments when you're after you tilt but we of course don't want to do that we just want to resume with the next action in sequence and we say go let me bring this forward so it tilted tracked now it's focusing it's doing that because we told it to focus at every high tilt it's going to take a record, save that image, tilt, track, focus, and record. Okay, so the tilt series is finished, and first you'll see, for example, I have this uh, mini tilt series here in this little box and I can page through and see my tilt series and how it looks from start to finish a quick and easy way so it looks fine close this also now I need to go to tilt series and terminate the tilt series and that yes I want to close it and completely terminate it and now it wants to know if I want to save a zero tilt view in the buffers if I plan to rotate it right away and I'll say yes and then for safety, I always immediately go to zero degrees so that I don't forget and try either rotating the grid or uh, moving the stage at high tilt. So I'm going to immediately go to zero degrees. And then I'll show your attention now to the log file. So it took 24, almost 25 minutes to take the entire tilt series. And then it tells you that it saved it and it has a lot of information here about for example, your tilting information, these kinds of things. And this gets put into a log file so that your um, administrator could look through and see what kinds of data people were collecting. In addition, it will give you a list of all the dose. So in between tilt series, it's a good idea to close and save your log file and then open a new log so that each tilt series has its own log file associated with it. I like to save the log files because they're very small um, files and it gives you all the information about the tilt series so if you have to have to ever have to go back and look up what defocus you used or what was your tilting increment it's all there and accessible